Leute, was habe ich mich beömmelt? Mahlzeit, Rich here again and as you can see this is part two of our video where I look at funny German slang. If you didn't see the first video go back and watch the first video here, part one about funny slang terms that I like in the German language. Now as I kind of semi-predicted I wasn't quite um, prepared for the all the feedback that I got but I thought you would also, I encourage you to comment in the comments section um, suggest your own slang terms. We never really got to the bottom of what these slang terms are actually really called, a technical term for them. Somebody pointed out quite rightly that they are all metaphorical, um, but you you got into the spirit of it, you replied with exactly the same type of slang term that I was talking about. Um, amongst mine were stuff like Drahtesel, Eiterbrille, and so on and so on. They're always kind of metaphors that have kind of like a functional um, umschreibung, I'd say in German, like a, an, an alternative descriptive thing that refers to the their appearance or the function of the thing. Anyway, let's get on with it. I decided I had so much fun reading your comments and also reading all your su suggestions. Some things that I was familiar with, some, I, some others that I weren't, wasn't familiar with, and decided to do part two as I said in the comments myself, part two, and just go through all your suggestions and we'll have a laugh at these together. These are absolutely fantastic. I'm going to start off with Marco. He said, I'll try and translate these into English or look for the English um, equivalent at, at the same time as well. Marco said, Arschfax, literally Arschfax, Fantastically descriptive. The image is immediately there in your mind. It's the, he said, Etikett der Unterhose, das hinten rausguckt. So when you've got your label of your trousers or your underpants and it's flipped up and it's peeking out from underneath your, your other, if it's your underpants, it's peeking out of your trousers. Brilliant. Arsfax, Arschfax. And then we had uh, one from I've got them all, all on here on the PC, so I'm going to keep looking to the PC. Excuse me. Um, Peter Koller, he said, this was a good one. We've got exactly the same equivalent in, in English as well. Maura Decolot. <coughs> Put my teeth back in. Maura Decolete. Literally, builder's cleavage. And he says, yes, the butt cleavage showing above the pants when a fat guy is working on the floor. Yeah, builder's cleavage um, is what we say in the UK. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Then we had one, Axel K, Axel K, Nasenfahrrad. Brilliant, uh, literally nose bicycle. Um, so if we went a step further, it would be Nasendrahtesel. A nose bicycle is of course a pair of glasses, spectacles. This wire thing that sits on your nose looks like a pair of bicycle on your nose. Brilliant, it's just, makes so much sense. This is why I love German so much. The, I think, I don't know whether it's just because I'm familiar with them in German, but Germany, German seems to have so much more of these specific type of slang terms where you you refer to something as something else. This, ah, love them, love them, love them. Then we had one from a user from, probably from Essen Stiele, Stiele 54, and a name that's too long to read out the rest of it. Nuttendiesel, that's a very common one. Literally, uh, Hors, Hors Diesel, um, Stark Riechendes Parfum, very strong uh, smelling perfume, yeah, that's quite a common one. And Peter Koller again, uh, Peter had a lot of fun with these, I can tell, he commented a few times um, on a similar similar note, Puff Browser, uh, Puff is, oh, the translation first of all, the Zekt he says, so sparkling wine, Puff is a brothel, and Browser, um, this is interesting. This reminds me of, um, I don't know, you've probably seen it on YouTube. There's all these Americans do this thing, um, regional accents, regional things, and they, they go through a whole list of terms and what you call carbonated sweet drinks, and it's whether it's soda or pop. Well, in the, where I grew up, we called it fizzy pop. So browser is fizzy pop or soda, sweet carbonated drinks, and... Um, Puff browser would be 
brothel pop, <laughs> brothel pop is sparkling wine. Probably the implication is cheap imitation champagne, so not real champagne, sparkling wine. Uh, Tasmino Ben, um, he came up with a good one. Moin Richie, was hier in und um Hamburg herum? Uh, so something from Hamburg and uh, the environs, the, the surrounding area. Schnutenpulli for mund nasen masker for the face masks that we're wearing now during the uh, pandemic. Schnute is a term used for the mouth. It's quite often used um, to when talking to children. And pulli is comes from pullover, pullover. So it's a it's a jumper, a sweater pullover for your for your mouth. I thought that was really really cute. But the you, Germans will understand this immediately. But the the word schnute. Uh, you associate with it, associate it with a little child. So, ah, come on, you kleine Schnute. That was a great one. I really like that one. Um, someone here said, connecting the dots. I've forgotten where you're from, connecting the dots. Never heard of jogging peitsche. Never heard of Eiterbrille. Uh But he'll never eat a pudding brezel ever again. I'm sorry. Um, they still taste great, believe me. This one is from Jens Gerke. He says, Asi Frühstück, so antisocial person's uh, breakfast. It doesn't sound any, anything like the same. Asi is just such a good uh, insult in, in German. You should call someone, ooh, you antisocial in uh, English. It's not quite the same. If you say Asi in German, you know exactly what's meant. And an Asi Frühstück is Kaffee, Kippe, Korn. It's got another great thing with all this uh, alliteration. Kaffee, Kippe, Korn. Uh, coffee, a cigarette and a glass of... Korn, what uh, English would call schnapps. We actually say, we use the term schnapps in English and we usually mean something that's like a, a clear schnapps um, corn. The typical schnapps, where we would use the word schnapps in English would be corn, because corn is very, very, the typical German schnapps. Whereas schnapps is actually, I would translate it as, as spirits or shorts. It's like the whole thing. It's the whole umbrella term. It could be vodka, it could be whiskey, it could be Café Kippercorn, Asi Frühstück. Top. I think this was, this was a reply to uh, Jens, and this is from Micha Grmgulflix. Strange name. Uh, Nutten Frühstück, so a, a, a horse breakfast, and uh, just nur Kaffee und Kippe. So no corn, no schnapps, just the uh, coffee and the cigarette. <laughs> Poor old uh, Nutte. The uh, bloke from uh, Essen Stiele again. Uh, Frikadelle, um, forerunner of the hamburger, the beef burger. Um, he said Löwenköttel oder Bremsklotz. Löwenköttel, Köttel is uh, droppings, so a lion's, a big <laughs> lion's dung, lion's droppings. Uh, and Bremsklotz is a brake pad. Quite a nice. Uh, image there. And also uh, 21st century boy says also briquette. Uh, briquette is the same word in uh, English. So lots of uh, words for the German frikadelle as you would imagine. Lots of things for uh, common foods. Like my Aziteller, Corrivo's Pommes Mayo. Yes and here we have uh, the comment from it was Bakatube79 that came up with the thing saying that all these things are metaphors. Insgesamt sind diese Ausdrücke umgangssprachliche uh, Metaphern, regionale Prägung, bis auf Kohldampf, das eben aus dem Rotwölsch entlehnt wurde. Ja, yeah. not exactly the one sim simple term that I was looking for. It probably isn't one, but that's it in as much of a nutshell as you can get it. Thank you very much. 21st century boy uh, contributed with Herrengedeck. So I would say gentleman, gentleman's place setting. Gedeck is kind of culinary language from like restaurant speak. Gedeck is place setting I think is about as close as you can get into it. So gentlemen's Herren, uh, gentlemen's place setting Herrengedeck is ein Bier ein Korn. A beer with a with a schnapps chaser. And this was really interesting. Uh, I can't pronounce your name. B-B-E-R-C-H-T-K-A. B-Bechtka? You know who you are. Um, she says, he or she says, I'm from Bavaria and I only ever heard of Draht, Isel and Kohldampf. <laughs> Which goes a long way to suggesting that my slang terms are very regional. I did say in that video that I think a lot of these are very Ruhrpott-lastig and uh, get used to it because I am very 
very, very robot lastig Oh, and our, uh, our friend from Steele is uh, back again. Porno, Balken oder Rotzbremse, Schneuzer. So, uh, porn, porn bar. Bar as in like a block. Um, porno Balken. If you see people's eyes blacked out in something where they're supposed on TV, if they're supposed to be, um, or in a photo, if they're supposed to be anonymous, that's a Balken. Porn. Porn block is a is a moustache, and also a, a snot break, Rotzbremse, Schneuzer, moustache. Dagmar Schemeitzke says, um, meine Eltern kannten Eitergeschwür, as this would be um, relating back to my Eiterbrille. So her, her parents um, were familiar with Eitergeschwür, and Geschwür is like a, an ulcer, and Eiter is pus, pus. Pusfield also, and this was uh, eier liqueur. Uh, what would we call that? It's like um, Advocard, the stuff you eat. I think um, the Americans call it eggnog. This egg, strange. I think the the famous brand is Advocard or something like that. We also drink it at Christmas in the UK. Horrible, sweet, yellow stuff. Eier liqueur with some creme de cassis mm. not for me witty to you says Zesselforza brilliant uh, translation um, couch potato we would say couch potato in English that was uh, very well translated Zesselforza is someone who farts, <laughs> farts in his uh, armchair armchair farter Trethupe literally uh, a step on horn a small dog that you have to be careful not to step on accidentally. It's so small and annoying. And, uh, you know, one of those yapping dogs. Yeah, you have to be careful not to step on it because it would be like a, a horn. <coughs> Gerd Aust mentions one that I originally had on my um, original list, but I, my list was too long. I only got up to number seven. And uh, this is a great one. Azzy Toaster. Another great one with Azzy. Doesn't really work in English. Toaster, toaster, of course. And it's a tanning bed, it's a sunbed. It's a toaster for antisocial people. It's shocking how common and how popular uh, sunbeds still are over here in Germany. It's really strange phen phenomenon. Maybe Germans are immune to skin cancer. And another suggestion for the same, with the same meaning from Hans Gichtelmeier. Uh, Münzmajorka, that was really good. Münze is of course a coin, so it's a, put a coin in the slot for uh, 20 minutes of Mallorca. It's really good. Coin, don't know what you call it, Mallorca, Mallorca in a Münzautomat. Peter Koller was back again. Loads of stuff in, stuff in Austrian dialect that I'm not even going to attempt. Thank you very much, they were good. Uh, I can't do uh, Viennese, but he also said he's got another one for jogging, jogging uh, pants, jogging hose, Taubstummenhose. I'm not going to read out his uh, explanation, but uh, deaf and dumb pants. You can fill in the gaps and uh, work out why. Another one from, uh, I'm going to try and pronounce the name, Stela 54 Combat Hamster or Combat Hamster. You can never tell if these people, these things are meant in English or in German. So, you know who you are. Stela 54. Yeah, and he says, uh, Kleines Kind, das gerade laufen lernt, Kniebeißer. So a small child that's just learned to walk is a knee biter. Whereas in English, as I replied to this, uh, in England we'd say ankle biter. Our kids obviously don't quite reach quite as far. Uh, knee biters in Germany, the small children. Germans are a bit taller than the British on average, I think. So your, your kids here, they reach up to the knee. And uh, we only get up to the ankle. <laughs> Manfred Fischer, another one that I originally had, had, had on my list, uh, Arschgeweih. And he also says, um, also known as Schlampen or, or Nuttenstempel, Arschgeweih is the, one of those um, tattoos over the um, at the lower back, on the lower back, that looks like Arschgeweih would be arse antlers. Geweih is antlers from a, of a deer or whatever. 
And um, this reminds me of a routine that Michael Mittermeier, a comedian, used to do. He used to talk about this and he used to say, you know what Ashkevai is called in, in Switzerland? He completely missed the point, to be honest. But never mind. He'd say, in Switzerland, you know what they say? Instead of Ashkevai, they say Nuttenstempel. Uh, now, Nuttenstempel, for me, seems to be a direct translation of the American English slang term for this type of tattoo. Very popular in the 90s. I don't think you... Well, people just still have them. They've not got them lasered off, but I don't think it's quite as popular now. People having Ashkevai tattoos done. Um, Nuttenstempel, uh, tramp stamp, is what they say in the US. I think that is more a uh, translation from the English version. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Michael Mittermeier, who strangely spent a year living and working in the USA, didn't realise that Nuttenstempel wasn't really Swiss, it was American. But never, never mind. <laughs> Tobias Schaman, uh, Hacken Porsche, for those shopping carts. I, I am a proud Hacken Porsche fahrer. I have my own very <laughs> very expensive Hacken Porsche, my own um, shopping trolley from one of these really expensive uh, brands. I spent, I spent over 100 euros on it, but it's actually fantastic. I um, never ever take the car to go shopping, uh, do everything on foot. You get 50 kilos worth of stuff in there and then it's up, up the stairs, plonk, 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 and the, the third floor of our apartment building keeps me fit and uh, protects the environment. And that was in fact the last one. Once again, thank you very much for all these. These were brilliant. I had so much fun. I hope uh, we've helped spread the word on uh, a few more. Some of these might be regional, like the one from Tasmino Ben. He said that was a bit typically Hamburg, the Schnutenpulli. I thought that was a great one. Uh, as ever, keep contributing down below. Maybe we'll go for a part three. I had so much fun with this. Um, if you did too and you enjoyed the video and you've not already done so, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up for the video. Uh, at this point, I'd also like to thank very much my patrons, the people that support me on Patreon with a monthly donation, a very small donation to help me keep making this content. Uh, if that's something that interests you, check the link down below. There's a monthly Q&A you can sign up for, you can ask your questions. I answer all the questions that get asked on YouTube also over there every month. And uh, there's also a monthly exclusive vlog. So lots of exclusive content over there for people wanting to support me financially. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next one here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. Macht's gut, Leute!